uh, let me join you in commending the staff and members for their work on this bipartisan mark. Um, to begin with, um, let me point out that the greatest risk our military faces today is the risk of an unready force that is insufficiently equipped and unable to accomplish its assigned missions. It is the job of this subcommittee to help ensure that our force has the resources it needs to acquire the equipment it needs to limit that risk. Mr. Chairman, I thank you for your efforts in addressing some of the shortfalls we face. Our Airland Subcommittee mark includes a number of important provisions which address the modernization and sustainment of Army ground and aviation platforms, as well as the tactical aircraft component of our Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force. However, there is still a ways to go to produce a defense budget that is based on our national security interests and the threats to those interests. We face no shortage of challenges with this budget. As the chairman has already pointed out, our mark supports the continued funding of the F-35, KC-46, and C-130J programs, and modernization of our C-130H aircraft, as well as the development of the long-range strike bomber and the Air Force's TX trainer. While the mark supports replacing our J-STARS aircraft and the HH-60, this committee needs to ensure there is a workable funding plan in place for these programs. I endorse the MARC's additional funds for the light utility helicopter and UH-60M Blackhawk. These funds will mitigate fiscal year 2016 sequestration impacts and provide Blackhawks to the Army National Guard as part of the Aviation Restructure Initiative. I also support what we've done for the Armored Vehicle Industrial Base. I strongly support the creation of a commission to study the future of the Army, including the role of, of our National Guard. I believe the National Guard must be a combat-capable force ready to supplement our active duty combatants when called on. I know the Commission's findings will greatly inform the Congress and the Department of Defense as we consider force structure decisions in the future. Mr. Chairman, before we uh, proceed to business, I would like to highlight three additional issues relevant to our subcommittee. Sequestration. Um, I remain gravely concerned that Congress has done little to mitigate the impacts of sequestration on our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Sequestration remains the greatest challenge facing our military. Without congressional action, DOD will return to sequestration funding levels in FY16 unless we take action the ability of our military and our industrial base to react to unforeseen contingencies will be severely eroded. Secondly, the uh, OCO. I am disappointed the President's budget request did not include a request for overseas conting contingency operations. You pointed this out, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, OCO remains an, an important element of the defense budget. It is important for our committee to see the request so we can have a total picture as we perform our oversight responsibilities. Thirdly, intra-theater aircraft. I remain deeply concerned about the Air Force's total force plan. I am convinced that some elements of the TFP were short-sighted and may adversely affect our intra-theater airlift capability at a time when our services are evolving toward a more rotational deployment model. I share the concern of many of my colleagues regarding the Air Force's plans to transfer C-130J and C-130H aircraft beginning this fiscal year. Given the intense congressional scrutiny, scrutiny and potential amendments on this issue, I once again urge the Air Force to delay any scheduled FY-14 aircraft and personnel transfers until the Defense Authorization Bill is complete and signed into law. In closing, I want to thank uh, the staff. Bill Sudi, Creighton Green, Robert Wisenan, and Ethan Saxon of the majority staff, as well as Bruce Hawk, Tony Lazarski, and Joe Live, the major, minority staff, for their hard work and collaboration on this mark. Mr. Chairman, I think if the taxpayers realized uh, how hard the staff works on this mark, uh, and and uh, how well they work together on a bipartisan and uh, and really patriotic uh, in, in, a, in a patriotic fashion. I think the taxpayers 
would be pleased and and think that um, that we're certainly getting our money's worth worth with this excellent staff. So uh, kudos all around to them, and uh, and they they have my greatest admiration. Uh, in closing, national security is solely a federal res responsibility under our Constitution. I know I know you share my gratitude toward uh, this wonderful staff for their bipartisan cooperation. Thank you, sir.